Hi students, Professor Eric here from the Virtual Trombone Academy. If you've never tried any tenor clef and you're a little worried about getting started, you're in the right place. So grab your trombone and follow along. This month, the Virtual Trombone Academy is performing a quartet arrangement of Scarborough Fair by Bill Reichenbach, and the entire first part is in tenor clef. I know, scared me too. But this is a great piece for getting started, as it is a simple, beautiful melody of mostly half notes and quarter notes, and anytime you're getting started with a new technique on the instrument, it's a good idea to pick something straightforward first, and then we can add more complexity later. Ultimately, we'd like to be reading tenor clef directly, hopefully just like you read bass clef. However, when you're first getting started, it's useful to use some kind of formula. I'd like to introduce two different techniques for two different kinds of minds. While we're doing this, it might be tempting to write some English letters in over the notes as we go. I would highly recommend not performing this technique. Why? Because we're learning to read the language of music, and learning to read it requires reading it. <laughs> I bet if you're understanding me right now, you're probably pretty good at reading English already. So let's practice the part we need to practice, which is reading notes. Students who write letters, <clears throat> or positions, are often reliant on that technique for a very long time. If you really strive to read the notes now, warts and all, you'll have it down in no time. I promise I'll go nice and slow. The first method is a little simpler, and great for those of you who can visualize very well. All we're gonna do is take the note and move it with our mind. To be really clear, if you start with a space note, you're gonna move it up two spaces, and on a line note, move it up two lines. Pretty easy, right? Let's try it on the first subphrase the first four measures of this piece. If you take this first note right here and move it up with your mind, since we're on a space, up two spaces, it looks kind of like a G in the staff in bass clef. Luckily, our first measure just has the same G again in beat three. Let's move on to measure two. Take a try this time, moving up this note up two spaces again. What note do we get? Looks kind of like a D in bass clef. Moving on to measure three. <laughs> again, move this note with your mind. That's an A, and then a B flat, remember your key, and hopefully you remember this one, another A. And our last note is G. All right, that's enough for right now. Grab your trombone and let's try playing it. Here are the first four bars. We're in three, four, so I'll give you three beats. Here we go. One, two, Great job! If that worked out, awesome! If not, uh, don't stress, you'll get it. Tenor clef takes practice. If you'd like, now is a good time to take advantage of virtual teaching, and you can head back in this video, back to where we just were, to try that a couple times on your own. I've left a timestamp for you in the description. Once you feel great about that one, let's move on to the next four bars. For this phrase, I'm going to use a different method, one that's for the analytical kids out there, and uses a little bit of music theory. Don't worry, if you don't like to count so much, that's okay. This is still an excellent technique to practice for understanding. You might have noticed that our note is moving by the same distance each time, that two lines or two spaces. In music theory, we call this distance a fifth. So then, if each note is moving by the same distance, then maybe we can read it in bass clef and then move it up a fifth each time in order to find the new note in tenor clef. Let's try it with the first note here on beat two of measure five. If you read that note in bass clef, it looks like a G, right? Well, let's think about our intervals. To move something up a fifth, we're going to try using our musical alphabet, the first seven letters of the regular alphabet. I like to arrange them in a circle, like this. When we count intervals, we count the same number of letters as the interval, including the first note and the last note. Let's give it a try. So that first note was a G, or it looked like a G in bass clef, right? So we say G, A, B flat, C, D. A fifth above G is D. So that makes this a D in tenor clef. Now, for the nerds out there, I know that this is not gonna work for all qualities of intervals, but for right now, it's a good start. Let's try the next note. Looks kinda like a B flat, doesn't it, in bass clef? Let's count. B flat, C, D, E, F. A fifth above B flat is F. And so this is an F in tenor clef. Let's try the first note in measure six. Looks kind of like a C, right, in bass clef. Let's count together to put it in tenor clef. C, D, E, F, G. That's right, high G 
in a slightly raised second position. It's a good idea on this note to use a drone or a tuner to check it. High G is a tricky one for a lot of students. Very nice, let's keep going, and I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Beat three of measure six looks like a B flat, so let's try. B flat, C, D, E, F. That's an F in tenor clef. Going on, looks like a G, so G, A, B flat, C, D. All right, you're on your own a little bit from here. It looks like an A, so E, that's right. Beat three is an F in bass clef. So, C, that's right, nice. And our last note in the phrase is, try it on your own, another D, very good. Whew, that's a lot of counting. Not everyone's favorite thing, but it might work for you, and again, doing it this way is very good for understanding. Let's give it a shot on trombone. Since we're starting on beat two, I'm gonna give you two, three, one, and then we'll play. Two, three, How'd it go? No worries if you crashed and burned. So did I for a very long time, especially me. I'm a bass trombone player and all those low notes has slowed my brain down a little bit. Just keep practicing and you'll get it. Once again, the advantage of virtual teaching is that you can go back and do this as many times as you need. Check the description for a timestamp. Now, I've showed you both ways. Use whichever way works best for you. All of us have different minds built by our different experiences. And if one method works better for you, that's great. The key is to practice, no matter what method you choose. Remember, in time, we'd really like to get rid of both methods and just read tenor clef straight up, but that will take some practice. Let's try all eight measures. Play along with me. One, two, Nice work. Once again, feel free to repeat that as many times as you need. As a teacher, I'd like to see you try that something like five times in a row without making any mistakes before you move on. The brain is a physical thing up there in your head and those neurons need to be wired up through practice before it will feel automatic. The whole piece will be available on the channel soon for you to play along. The last thing to know quickly about tenor clef is that it is an example of a C clef. These two arcs right here, they meet in the middle on the line C. That can be useful if you're learning other C clefs like alto clef. Thanks for watching. The Virtual Trombone Academy is coming soon to an internet near you. If you have a different method for learning tenor clef, that's awesome. Leave a comment down below to share it with us and other students. Learning is social. If this video helped you, you might help us in the algorithm by giving it a like and sharing it with another student who needs to learn tenor clef too. Now, Get back to practicing. Uh -huh.